So, I did not watch this part, so we're going to all discover it together. We're going to all discover it together. Uh, how I fell in love with Kamala Harris. I wasn't expecting this one. So, this is something that I would usually probably re uh, review on the Anton Daniels channel, but let's go ahead and get into it. Please the welcome the second gentleman. my dad, the second gentleman of the United States, Doug Emhoff. That is disrespectful in itself. Do not call me the first, the first lady husband. Do not call me the second gentleman. I, listen, it ain't no way that you can, it ain't a way that you can frame that that's going to ever make it more masculine. Please welcome my dad, the second, the second gentleman. So then you become the first gentleman if she ever becomes, no, nah, no, nope, 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 not happening. That is weird to me. It is weird to me. Hoff, who has supported his wife, gave up his career and his law practice to be the vice president's husband, supporter, second gentleman, trying to make history again. I'm fairly certain this is not where he thought he would. That blind date, all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you. Hello to my big beautiful, blended family up there. I love you so much. Aren't you proud of Cole? Wow. And that one with the glasses on, he look a little, he look a little different. I love you so much. Aren't you proud of Cole? That one with the glasses right there. <laughs> Come on, y'all, let's keep focus. Let's focus. Wow. And a special shout out to my mother. I see you. Y'all not gonna hold him accountable for that? Hold on, before we get into the speech, y'all not gonna hold him accountable for that? Cause y'all keep talking about, oh no, no, let me bring my black culture. Let me bring the black culture. Let me bring the black culture. Let me bring the black culture to the front of the congregation. Snow hairs, snow hairs. Snow hairs. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, bruh. Y'all y'all gonna let him get away with that? Okay, well, if he can get away with it, then don't say nothing to nobody else. Don't hold nobody. Don't call nobody no Karen. Don't do nothing else. I have not seen this speech. I'm reacting to it for the first time. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody else. You know how black women like to talk like that when they get mad? No, nah, because you just talking. You just talking. You just talking. I don't want to hear nothing from another black woman until they bring this to the front of the congregation. I want to see memes all over TikTok about this. I want to see black women talking the way that they talk when they talk to us when they mad at us. No, 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 no. You not saying nothing. You not saying nothing to me. You not, you not saying nothing to me. With all of that neck ringing and snatching dreams out of the air. No, because it's giving, it's giving, it's giving. All of the is givens and it's, it's, it's giving trauma from, uh, from, from stealing gentrification. Do all of that. Do all of that on TikTok. Do all of the clapping because I don't believe you talking to me like this right now. I want to I want to see all of y'all doing that same get that same energy same energy to my mother I don't want to hear nothing my mother is the only person in the whole world who thinks Kamala is the lucky one for marrying me <laughs> and to Kamala who well we just saw where she is she's out on the trail listening to and talking with voters. Honey, I can't wait for you to come back to Chicago because we're having a great time here. I love you so much. I'm so proud of how you're stepping up for all of us. But that's who she is. Wherever she's needed, however she's needed, Kamala rises to the occasion. And she did it for me and our family. And now that the country needs her, She's showing you what we already know. She's ready to lead. 
She brings both joy and toughness to this task, and she will be a great president we will all be proud of. Now, I'm the son of two Brooklynites, Mike and Barb. They've been together almost 70 years. My dad worked in the shoe business in Manhattan, and he moved our family out to New Jersey. Where's New Jersey? I see you out there when I was a little kid. And in a lot of ways, I had a typical Jersey suburban childhood. I biked around the neighborhood. I took the bus to Hebrew school. And I rode to Little League practice in the way back of my coach's wood-paneled station wagon. And if we did well, we got to have a Slurpee after. In my neighborhood, everyone left their garage door open. Wherever you ended up at dinner time, that's the family that fed you. Everyone took care of everyone else. And the guys I grew up with are still my best friends. The group chat is active every day, and it's probably blowing up right now, guys. <laughs> When my dad had to get a new job. Why they be trying to act like they so relatable to regular folk? <laughs> Come on, man. Look, look, bro. That is over. For the next person that give a speech, I don't care if you're on the Democratic side or you're on the Republican side. You've been so far removed for so long. You are not one of them. I'm going to just tell you. I'm, look, I'm going to be honest with y'all because I know he's going to get into how much he loved Kamala Harris. That's what he said uh, on, on the thing that they sent to me. Or whatever. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that because I haven't heard this speech before. Let me say this, y'all. Stop trying to tell the story of your origin like you can relate. You can't. You can't. I grew up in Detroit, but I'm 42 years old. I ain't seen a ghetto in decades unless I drove through it and I put... I, I've been so far removed from so long from being broke that I put... I, when I... Ooh, make sure you lock the door. Make sure you lock it. Sometimes I got to remind myself that I was from there. I drive by some of them houses. I'd be like, oh, how do we get, how do we all fit in that house at the same time? I can't relate to you. I don't even know what it's like to make $100,000 a year no more. I'm so far removed from 100 k I'm not going to sit here and tell you a story. Yeah, man, because, uh, you know, the price. I don't know the price of milk. You think, dog, do you know the last, my DoorDash orders be $68, $68 minimum. Honest to God, I'm not even going to kid you. I have not, and this, that's just for me. And it's only because I want to make sure that I can pick between which one I want to eat. Whichever one I don't want to eat, I wind up giving it away to somebody outside. You know what? Everything look good on the menu. Order it all. And then whatever we don't eat, we going to give it away to the people. that I don't even know what it feels like to drive a regular car no more. I've been driving Benzes and stuff for so long. I've been giving away. I'm not going to sit here and tell. I could tell you the origin story so you can better understand where it is that I came from. So you can make so you can't be making no excuses. I, they keep talking. And yes, if we did a good job, we can't. And we had a Slurpee family, family, family. Honest to God. Real talk. Let's, let's stop the gaslighting to try to make it seem like you one of these Americans. You are an elite. You are an elite heir. You've been an elite heir for a long time. You have money for a long time. Stop trying to act like y'all one of them. You not one of them. You ain't been one of them. You don't even know what it feels like to be one of them. You don't, you ain't, he probably ain't been to a grocery store. He probably don't even know what the inside of a gro grocery store feel like. I'm about to sit here and gaslight people. Yeah, man. No, dog. Look. <sighs> it's it's not it's not that. When I left, let me tell you something. I I was out in the suburbs yesterday because I got multiple places just in Michigan alone, right? I was out in the suburbs yesterday. I have cars that I haven't even driven in months. I have to make time to drive some of the cars. I got a cover on my Porsche 911. My Porsche 911 has 276 miles on it, and I already put it up because I don't plan on driving it until next, next summer. Stop trying to act like, just get to people, tell them what's really happening, tell us how you fell in love, let's not act, let's not gaslight the people. I hate it. I, I'm so tired of these people getting up there telling these stories like, like y'all gonna be able to relate. Even your childhood wasn't, wasn't the same as everybody else's. It's not the same. We moved across the country to L.A. Money was tight. Hey, California. Money was tight. 
My, Kamala Harris gonna tell you that she worked at McDonald's. Money was tight, so I worked at McDonald's in high school for some extra. On everything. On my father's grave, I have not seen his speech. On my father's grave, I have not heard his speech. Kamala Harris has told the story about her working at McDonald's so often that that is the go-to speech. That is the go-to speech. If I ever run for office, guess what? I'm going to say that I applied to work at McDonald's even though I never worked there before. If I ever run for office, I'm going to tell y'all, hey, y'all, Rita worked at McDonald's in high school. Money was tight, so Rita worked at McDonald's in high school. Come on, dog. I know y'all not going to sit here and let these people gaslight y'all like this. Seriously, man. Seriously, bro. Cash, not only was I employee of the month, but I still have the frame picture, which you just saw. And, and there was a ring, this golden arches and all. And then I waited tables, parked cars. I was working full time so I could afford to go to college part time. And thanks to... Thanks to partial scholarships, student loans, and a little help from my dad, I got myself through law school. And I got my first job as a lawyer. Which is also where I met the guys in my fantasy football league. And uh, a lot has changed in our lives since the early 90s, uh, but my team name is still Nirvana. Um, yes, after the ban. Uh, I worked hard, and I love being a lawyer. And by the way, I still get to be part of the profession by teaching students at Georgetown Law School. I got married, became a dad to Colin Ella. Unfortunately, I went through a divorce, but I eventually started worrying about how I would make it all work. And that's when something unexpected happened. In 2013, I walked into a contentious client meeting. We worked through the issue, and by the end of the meeting, the now happy client offered to set me up on a blind date which is how I ended up with Kamala Harris's phone number. <laughs> now, for generations... Is this, is this, this is after Montel Williams, right? Got it. People have debated when to call the person you're being set up with. And never in history has anyone suggested 8.30 a.m. <laughs> and yet, that's when I dialed. I got Kamala's voicemail, and I just started rambling. Hey, uh, uh, you said it. You said it, Chris James. You're a single father. Hey, hey, baby mamas. Not baby mamas. Single women. Get with you a baby daddy. Hey, it's Doug. <laughs> uh, mama. Not, not he doing the, I'm a clueless white guy. It's the clueless white guy play. Hey, guys, I'm Doug. I don't know what to do. I don't got no rhythm. But you gonna give me the Kamala Harris, the black woman effect. Hey, I'm the clueless white guy. She's gonna come and she's gonna make me the man that I need to be. I'm gonna fall in love because she's gonna overlook my idiosyncrasies and she's gonna be the first time she talked to a white man. Hey, I'm Doug. <laughs> hey. I'm the guy from the Valley, California. I'm the guy that I don't have no rhythm. I can't move my hips, but I'm Doug. My way to an early meeting. Again, <laughs> it's Doug. It's Doug. I remember I was trying to grab the words out of the air and just put them back in my mouth. And for what seemed like far too many minutes, I hung up. By the way, Kamala saved that voicemail. And she makes me listen to it on every anniversary. Hey, it's but that message wasn't the only unusual thing about that day. Now, Kamala, who normally would have been working hard at her office, uh, just happened to be waiting at her apartment for a contractor to do some work on her kitchen. I was eating at my desk, which was not a regular occurrence for a busy lawyer like me who appreciated a good business lunch. But that's when she called me back. And we talked for an hour, and we laughed. Well, you know that laugh. I love that laugh. The and maybe that counted as our first date. 
Or maybe it was that Saturday night when I picked her up and told her, buckle up, I'm a really bad driver. Because <laughs> you can't hide anything from Kamala Harris, so you might as well own it. And as I got to know her better... This is a horrible speech. ...and just fell in love fast, I learned what drives Kamala. And it's what you've seen over these past four years, and especially these past four weeks. She finds joy in pursuing justice. She stands up to bullies just like my parents taught me to. And she likes to see people do well, but hates when they're treated unfairly. She believes this work requires a basic curiosity in just how people are doing. Her empathy is her strength. Over the past decade, Kamala has connected me more deeply to my faith, even though it's not the same as hers. She comes to synagogue with me for high holiday services, and I go to church with her for Easter. Mm. Oh, my God. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Are we doing this? It's a Thursday. It ain't even Friday yet. Are we doing this? I get to enjoy her mom's chili relleno recipe every Christmas, and she makes a mean brisket for Passover. It, it brings me right back to my grandmother's apartment in Brooklyn. You know, the one with the plastic covered couches. So they're the typical American blended family. Classic, classic, plastic on the couches. <sighs> but Kamala has fought against anti-Semitism and all forms of hate her whole career. She's the one who encouraged me, a second gentleman, to take up that fight, which is so personal to me. And those of you who belong to blended families know that they can be a little complicated. But as soon as our kids started calling her Mamala, I knew we'd be okay. Ella. You mean like the mamala that Drew Barrymore? Had? Come on, man. Y'all not gonna lie to me. Why y'all keep lying to me, bro? This junk is stressing me out. Honest to God, this junk is stressing me out. So y'all gonna keep lying to me? Y'all gonna y'all gonna gaslight me like this? You telling me? You telling me that Drew Barrymore hit you with the mamala? You came back and said. So Drew Barrymore learned it from your kids. From, your, from her stepkids that they call a mama. Uh, Ella calls us a three-headed parent. Y'all not about to gaslight me. Y'all not going to gaslight me. Nope. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope, you're not gonna gaslight me. Cause I, I didn't I didn't seen this story before. I seen I seen this playbook before. You lying to me. You lying to me. I could tell a I could spot a dude that's gaslighting me hundred percent of the time. I've been thinking that we really yeah. all need a tremendous yeah. hug in the world right now. Yeah. But in our country, we need you to be mamala of the country. I feel like I'm cursed with a good memory. <laughs> Rhonda, Rhonda, I feel like I'm cursed with a good memory. Something is wrong with me. Please, please don't let me continue to remember this type of stuff. Come on, dog. Come on, Doug. Don't do this to me, Doug. Dougie, Doug. Don't teach me how to Dougie like this, Dougie, Doug. Come on, Doug. Look at this fakeness. Look at look at the fakeness in this. Look how close they are to each other uncomfortably. They don't even like each other. Yeah. But in our country, we need you to be mamala of the country. <laughs> teach me how to Dougie. Teach, teach me how to Dougie. Go ahead, Doug. Teaching machine. Kamala and Kirsten. Thank you both. Thank you both. 
for always putting your family and the kids first. Now, Cole and Ella's friends knew that when they'd come over for Sunday dinner with Mamala, it was going to be real talk. In between taking cooking instructions, they'd have to answer questions about what problem they wanted to solve in the world. They learned that you've always got to be prepared because Kamala is going to prosecute the case. <laughs> and in the same breath that Cole and Greenlee told us that they were engaged, they asked Kamala to officiate their wedding. And in the oh, same the way that she always steps up when it matters, Kamala puts so much time into those remarks. She a minister? Who, how, who, who can authorize the officiating of weddings? I'm just curious. And she bound them in a book that matched her dark red dress and then turned that into a gift for the happy couple. A few days ago, during this incredible time we're going through, there was a brief window when Kamala was back at home. And I saw her sitting on her favorite chair and in the middle of a wild month, I just hoped that she was having a, a quiet moment to herself. But then I realized she was on the phone. And of course, my, me, my mind went to all the potential crises that the vice president could be dealing with. Was it domestic? Was it foreign? Was it campaign? I could see she was focused. Oh, so she was uh, paying attention to what was going on at the border. Gotcha. And all I knew was that it must be something important. And it turns out it was. Ella had called her. That's Kamala. I'm about to put you on, uh, hey Les, I'm on a live stream. Mm -hmm. What's up, baby? How you doing? Hi, I'm good. You up earlier today than usual. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to get ready for school. Oh, you so cute. Hey Les, I got a question. I've never asked you this question before. Mm -hmm. What do you What do you think about Kamala Harris? Oh, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't really care for her care about her really not really why my you, type of person <laughs> why you say she's not your type of person <laughs> just some stuff i'll be seeing i just don't think she's my type of person what's your type of person <laughs> um um my type of person is mr trump you like trump less yeah, I do, actually. Why do you like Trump? A lot of things he's done, I just, I like it better. I agree with him more. you so smart. You are the smartest girl that I've ever met in my entire life. You know that? Thank you. You are the smartest girl that I've ever met in my entire life. Thank you. Now stop buying $600 jeans. <laughs> that was only one time. Bye. Bye. My daughter can see through it. My daughter can see through it. My daughter not going for these lies. My daughter be like, oh, she's so fake, dad. Look at that laugh. Look at what she's doing. My daughter can see through the BS. Oh, my God, dad. Look how fake she is. I, and, and contrary to popular belief, I've never, ever told my daughter ever how to vote or how she should look at things. She does her own research. She goes and looks at things. She, she pays attention. And she was like, no, nah, I'll rock with it. Since she was a little girl, she was like, I'll rock with it. I like Trump. I like Trump. This and that and this and that, so on and so forth. My daughter, she, she, not, she not finessed the same way that the community. If a 16-year-old, a 16-year-old that is preparing for high school, if a 16-year-old that is preparing for high school could see through it, how can these grown women that be on TikTok not be able to see through exactly what this woman is. If a 16, three, a 16 year old can see through it, how, how can a grown, y'all grown people out here not be able to see through it? It sounds scripted. Okay, cool. You know me, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind calling. 
having a good time? It sounds scripted. Yeah, I plan to call my daughter at the two hour and 30 minute mark. Hello? Hey, you busy? Uh, nope, just driving. Just got a couple questions for you. I'm on a live stream. All right, what's up? Politically, years ago, way before this election, what did Leslie start ordering for her room? You said, oh, to my Leslie's Trump posters? Years ago, what did she start ordering? That Trump stuff, the posters, or whatever that, like, flag thing was that she had. Thank you. I appreciate it. You, um, is there a reason why you called me on this number? Oh, I called you on the wrong... What do you mean? This is the right number. <laughs> no, it's not. What number is this? This is the other phone. No, this is the black... I got a black phone in my hand right now. You called me on my other phone. Oh, my bad. I just hit, I just hit you. Uh, did you see that text message that I sent you? Mm, oh, you talking about the uh, the Sky Dweller? Yeah. I thought we was waiting to buy it from Amanda. Well, he just called and said he got it, so that's up to you. All right, I'll call you as soon as I get off. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> New watch alert. <laughs> Anyways. Let's continue on with the show. How I fell in love with Kamala Harris. We're going to go ahead and read the Super Chat Center. We're going to go from there. Um, my daughter was having Trump flag. And it's so funny. You know what's so funny? I actually have live streams where I went through and I went and ran through the house with my daughter's flags on. Go on to Anton Daniels' channel and go and look up some of my old live streams and see what it is that I got going on. Anyways.